I'm Eric Barnes with The Daily Memphian, and welcome to The Sidebar, a weekly show on the community, arts, culture, and more. Today, we're very pleased to be talking to Mia Henley from Creative Aging, so stay with us for a conversation with Mia, and a special thanks to our sponsor, Trezvent Manor. Mia, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. It's great to see you. Yes, absolutely. Um, You are Executive Director of Creative Aging. Um, What is Creative Aging? Creative Aging is a nonprofit organization that connects older adults to music and the arts and connects artists uh, and musicians to uh, 65-plus learners uh, in our community. And it it sounds like there's a wonderful thing, a great thing. There's more to it than it being just a wonderful thing, I feel like. Like There's a whole... I mean, t- talk about why the founder, she started in, what, 2003? What Correct. was the sort of need and what was the, why this specifically? Well, our founder, Meryl Klein, started uh, Creative Aging because she, she was actually getting a master's in gerontology. And as part of her coursework, she was doing a lot of observation and working with older adults living in uh, care communities. And she noticed, I mean, not surprisingly, that they were, that these communities were, were often devoid of any kind of music or arts engagement opportunities. So she just dreamed up this idea of starting Creative Aging. And, you know, today there are more organizations like this. But in 2003, it was an extremely novel concept. So since that time, we've grown, um, we've added programs, and we have expanded our reach. Meryl started with five uh, communities that she worked with, five senior communities, and we now have about 105. So we're really, um, and and there's so much more work to be done. I I don't know if you know this, but there are uh, over 140,000 people in Shelby County, over 65. Well, I was going to get that. Yeah, it's a and it's huge growing. number. And right? soon, soon will be our largest demographic category in, in Shelby County, Memphis, and, and also in the state of Tennessee and, of course, in the nation. So um, what we're trying to do is keep people active and engaged and vibrant as they become 65, 75, 85. You know, it's a, it's a 30-year-plus period that we're serving, and people aren't the same. Yeah. And so we're serving people in lots of different ways, depending on where they are in that, that journey, um, you know, that the spectrum of aging that, that there is. Yeah. I mean, by comparison, we talk about children. We say infants, toddlers, preschool, yeah. grade school. You know, we have like eight categories for 18 and under. Right, right, right. And they're clearly different. Right. And it's the same with older adults and not everyone's in the same place, obviously, at the same age. So anyway, we're trying to do lots of things to engage people. Um, Talk about some we'll come back to some of the demographics and the numbers, but talk about some of the organizations you work with and and how the programming you were were talking earlier. And there's kind of three parts to the program. Yeah. So so we have three different programs. um, And and I will say just as an umbrella, our community partnerships are uh, essential to everything that we do. Um, for our uh, performances within senior communities, we partner with communities where seniors live or gather. So community centers, senior centers, residential um, communities, adult daycare communities, nursing homes, just the whole gamut of places. Um, and of course, we partner with musicians and artists in that, you know, they are really part of our organization. They're independent contractors, but all of our musicians and artists are paid to do the work that they do. And so it's a it's an important um, income earning opportunity for people, but it is also this wonderful um experience for musicians and artists. You know, they write back after their experiences and they tell us like Oh my gosh. I mean, I had just this most amazing conversation with this gentleman who, for example, you know, knew Elvis and, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you know what I mean? And there's all these stories that people want to tell and, you know, they get the, the, the person who sort of wakes up in their wheelchair and all of a sudden is tapping their feet or clapping their hands when it seemed like they might be at at the end of their life. So there are wonderful experience for the artists. Our studio courses um, is probably my one of my favorite programs because it's where we see people coming back week after week. Um, they come for like an hour and a half a week for six to eight weeks. And not only are people learning art skills, but they are really building community. So it's this combination of connection, creativity, and community that we like to drive. And that's studios in your y- y'all space, or do you partner with you know, the studios? So no, we don't have a space. Our space is all over Memphis gotcha. and Shelby County. We partner with Memphis Public Libraries. We partner with the Dixon and the Brooks. We partner with area theaters, Tennessee Shakespeare Theater, Memphis. And so with all those places... Um, provide us with their space for free because it because it is a partnership. They want to engage with the senior community sure. too. Yeah. We have the means of connecting the the two groups. So so that's what we do. 
Yeah. yeah. And then our, we, I know we talked about this a little bit earlier too. Our concert series is, um, is fabulous. We've been doing it for, this will be our ninth year at Theater Memphis. So like once a month. We partner with an arts organization and with Theater Memphis is the host location to bring some sort of incredible arts experience to older adults that is that is meant to be barrier free. Yeah. So most of them are at 130 in the afternoon. You know, Theater Memphis, super easy to get in and out of free parking and the tickets are seven dollars. So it's it's available. It's accessible um, to everyone. And you're working with. Seniors, seniors of all backgrounds, all Absolutely. all income levels. Absolutely. Yeah, and and it's interesting to think. Of, I mean, my, I mean, we we've known each other a long time. Our kids grew, went to school together, where they were like pre K together, right? Yeah. I think or something like yeah. that. Um, I'm dealing now, you know, with aging parents, right? You know, I lost my mom to Alzheimer's a few years ago. Um, my dad now, I'm like literally getting on a plane a few days after we we record this to go help with my dad, who's fine, but not fine, you know? And so you, you, you realize, and I have friends and I know, I'm sure you have friends who've gone through this or going through this, these, these challenges. And one of the things that resonates about this for me with my father is it drives me nuts that my father doesn't engage. He does not live here in Memphis. He lives up in the Northwest. He doesn't, he gets out, he goes and walks, but he doesn't really engage in things like this. Yeah. And it's, it's a struggle for my brother and I to get him to engage in things. He's very, he's a very obstinate man. It's so. a, it, well, and you know, it, it is a particular challenge we find um, to get men involved. And I think that just, yeah. just historically women, uh, you know, men, you know, historically men have been the breadwinners. Women have done more of the community based stuff. Even if they were working, they were also the one who was doing the school. And of course, that's a complete stereotype and all families right. are different. But I think a lot of times men haven't made time for hobbies where women have a little bit and then they, they retire sure. and they don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, they just because ha- they never have. They've never been in book club right. or, or, or what have you. So I think that is changing with our generation and with every generation. But um, we really encourage people, men, women, all backgrounds to get involved. And, and what we hear a lot, too, is, oh, I'm not an artist. I, I don't do that. I don't I don't know about that. I'm not creative. And I'm like, you don't know, maybe, right. whether you're creative, because when is the last time you picked up? a pencil to sketch something yeah. or a paintbrush, or you tried to play an instrument or mold a pot. I mean, there are so many things you can do to be creative and, and really just allowing yourself the space to try people who get together in our classes. I, I'm serious when I say they become friends and, and we have had people say, you know, I haven't had so many new friends since the fourth grade. I mean, it's just unbelievable to think, you know, at 75 or 80, I'm going to go out and build connections with complete strangers. Because the way that we meet strangers as younger people is, is often through work. Yeah. And so when work is gone away. Or school, like how we met. Right. right? When, I mean, when it's, the, it's these, there's no kids more are in school, school together and we're doing birthday parties and all that kind of right. stuff. That's right. No more school connections, no more youth sport connections, no more work connections. Right. Maybe a spouse has died. You know, it is a challenging thing to get out there on your own right. and find new ways to engage. The arts are an amazing bridge to connection and, and community and, and really it's accessible to everybody. So even if you don't want to paint or draw or, or play the piano yourself, you could come to the concert series events and be yeah. around other people who are interested. We have a wonderful, um, we, we have a newsletter and we have a post uh, or a column called eight over 80. And so we feature different people over age 80 and the way that they're engaging with the arts um, in this quarterly, quarterly newsletter. And the gentleman, this, month is 92. Never did anything with the arts. He was a sportsman. He went to ball games. He was really involved with all of that. But then his wife died and somehow uh, a, a f- somebody he knew from the Bartlett area was going to be performing in our concert series. Oh, wow. yeah. And so he said, okay, I'm going to go. And he, he, had, he had never been to theater Memphis as a, this was probably three years ago. So it was an almost a 90 year old man. And he goes in there and he is practically come to every event since, Yeah, you know, and so it was completely new, right. not his habit. So anyway. Yeah. 
And let me remind everyone, we're talking to Mia Henley. She's exec- executive director of Creative Aging. People can go to creativeaging.org. Creativeagingmidsouth.org. Or you can just Google Creative Aging yeah, Memphis and, and it'll pop right And get up. engaged with all these kinds of Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Keep, keep reminding people of that. Um, it, it is, it's so interesting. I mean, again, I, I can't help but relate it to again, lots of people I know who are going through these various things. Some friends who um, just moved to Tresvent. I'm not mentioning that because they're sponsors, but it's... Co- they're our sponsor, sponsor too. Yeah, we'll they're mention sponsor. Them. Yeah, we'll mention them a lot. Uh, but... <laughs> Or other kind of facilities. And one of the things they talk about is, oh, my God, I've never been so busy. Right. I, I, it's really been amazing. It's, you know, right. a friend of mine who was like, I, I was having a drink with him. And he's like, I got to go because I'm having a drink with somebody else. And then I'm going to the happy hour at wherever. And, That's right. You know, and, and there's this kind of energy that comes from that. that oh, that Lord, I yes. think is maybe even a little bit surprising uh-huh. just at, among people who engage in these kinds of programs. But there's, like you're saying, when your social life has changed so much, when well, you didn't really prepare for it or you've lost a spouse, there's a kind of, what, what are you doing with your time? What are you, you doing? Know, and right. how do you engage with people? Right, right. And, you know, Tresvin is, is, is a wonderful example. There, there are many uh, communities that, you know, like Tresvin, have regular events, just, just ongoing, happy hours, art classes, you know, outings to, to this, that, and the other. And, and people are uh, very social. But we work with a lot of communities that are really on the opposite end of the socioeconomic spectrum. And, and they uh, are places where seniors live and they've moved there. You know, it's kind of, I liken it to moving, you know, the 18-year-old moving to the college dorm and having 400 people in a building that they have never laid eyes on. Yeah. And it's all well and good when you're 18, but when you're 75 or 80, yeah. it's a whole nother thing. And if you have a community like Tresvent that like builds engagement opportunities into their system, it's great. But if you live in, you know, one of our subsidized housing communities, and, and some of which are, are nice, but they don't have budgets for Pro- that sort of thing. And, and so. Creative yeah. aging is the only arts access opportunity that these folks have, and, 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 and most of the subsidized housing towers are located in under-resourced neighborhoods without a lot of community assets. So it's not like they could walk out the door and, and cross the street to, to some uh, other theater or some other thing. I mean, there's really nothing nearby. So we love building bridges with those communities where it is... Um, especially meaningful because it may be the only thing they have in in a whole month. I mean, I had a funder ask me one time, um, well, well, how much do you think they should have? How many events do you think they should have? And I said, well, you know, I know some communities that have five a week. Yeah. So, you know, and I, and it's a struggle to find funding for one a month. Yeah. Because we have, unfortunately, we have so, maybe it's, un, maybe it's fortunate that we have so many places people can live, but there are so many under-resourced seniors in our yeah. community. Yeah. Uh, we're going to come back with me here uh, in just a second, talk more about all of this. Um, let me remind everyone we're here with me, Henley. She's Executive Director of Creative Aging. I'm Eric Barnes, and this is The Sidebar, which airs on WYXR 91.7 every Thursday at 1130, focused on the community, arts, culture, everything in between. Uh, it's not just a radio show, though. It's one of many weekly podcasts we do at the Daily Memphis including Bill Drees' politics podcast on the record, the Memphis Grizzlies podcast with Drew Hill and Chris Harrington, and our food podcast, Sound Bites, hosted by Jennifer Chandler, who came over to the Daily Memphian six weeks, two months ago. And that also airs here on WYXR every Thursday at 11. We also host uh, the podcast version of Behind the Headlines, the, the news weekly news show we do with the good folks at WKNO every week. All of our podcasts are on the Daily Memphian site, as well as iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we also host the podcast version of Behind the Headlines, the news show we do every week with the folks over at WKNO. All of our podcasts are on the Daily Memphian site, as well as iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get the WYXR shows, that's Sound Bites and Sidebar, here at uh, wyxr.org, or you can download the, the WYXR app. Um, that includes all the WYXR shows, the talk shows, the music shows. And also, if you're not, um, consider becoming a supporter of WYXR. It's nonprofit, listener-supported radio. Um, you can become a member. You can do a one-off donation. You can do that at, at wyxr.org uh, or on the app. And if you're not a paid subscriber to The Daily Memphian, do consider becoming one. Um, subscriptions are what pays pays the bills for us, primarily. Um, we are also a nonprofit 
um, newsroom, the largest newsroom in the region. So uh, do consider becoming a paid subscriber or consider making a donation to Daily Memphian. Um, recently on uh, the sidebar, we had Howard Stovall, who's uh, sponsoring, I think it's the fourth uh, 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 Mighty Roots Festival down in uh, Delta. Um, we had Willie Bearden also writing about the Delta. There's a Delta theme this uh, recently. Uh, but Willie Bearden, the filmmaker and the writer, uh, was a great conversation with Willie about his book and about his his memoir and his time doing all kinds of crazy, wonderful things. Toby Sells from the Memphis Flyer and also a frequent uh, guest on Behind the Headlines. He was on a few weeks ago talking about his new book about the paranormal um, and just other insane things that Toby likes to, to focus on, starting with Bigfoot. Um, and Rose Smith, uh, the, uh, who is the photography curator at the Brooks Museum of Art. I mentioned Behind the Headlines, and coming up this week, we've got Tina Sullivan, who is the outgoing, uh, retiring executive director of the Overton Park Conservancy and, honestly, a very good friend. Um, so we're looking forward to having her on. We recently had Frederick Agee, who is a district attorney from some of the rural counties around Shelby County, talking about what it is to be a district attorney in those counties, but also talking about Steve Mulroy. Um, Frederick Agee is a, uh, very much a Republican, but he is also very much a, um, a defender of Steve Mulroy, as Steve Mulroy has been under fire from various quarters. Speaking of that, we had Brent Taylor, uh, the state senator, and Josh Spickler on the show recently um, talking about criminal justice, public safety. It was a great conversation about the real complexities and their very differing views, but it was a great 26-minute debate is almost too strong, but just a conversation about how they view things. Again, that's all. Uh, those were on Behind the Headlines, and you can get those as a podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, you can go over to WKNO.org or Daily Memphian and watch those shows. Last bit of housekeeping before we get back with Mia here. Um, our, uh, the first of our three fall business seminars at the Daily Memphian are coming up. This is the small business seminar. It's on September 4th at 3.30. We'll have Beverly, Beverly Robertson um, from Trust Marketing and all kinds of other things. But, but, but talking more about Trust Marketing um, and the handoff from her and her husband, Howard, um, a wonderful couple of people, to their children who are taking over the next generation of their marketing firm. We've got Scott Tashi from uh, uh, City Silo, uh, the restaurant restaurant, a couple of restaurants they have now. Um, and they're moving and expanding um, uh, in East Memphis, their restaurant. He'll be talking about that. And that's one of those restaurants that is really thriving. Uh, as well as Monique Williams from Biscuits and Jams. She'll be on uh, the panel as well. That's our small business seminar, September 4th at 3.30. Back with me here. Um, that was a lot of housekeeping today. I don't know. I felt like that was just a lot. I'm like winded. I had to do it twice. We, hopefully Natalie will make it sound better. Um, and also when people hear things, I should always remind, we're still in Crosstown in one of the atriums. So there's some people going by. There was a dog barking. It's all good. It's all fine. Um, we're about to be begin construction on our new uh, studio um, and hopefully be in there by end of the year. But um, talk about, you know, how do you, uh, two things I want to talk about, about, what creative aging does is um, one is getting people to places. Transportation can be a real issue. And I'm curious how you, how you cha handle that challenge. You're getting something like 400 people to a given performance you might do at theater Memphis or at the Croc center. And then talk about, you know, how do we talked about like my father, you know, the obstinate people who maybe don't want to, how, how much time and effort and resource can you put into encouraging people? to get engaged, you know, and, and how does that work? So, so uh, let's talk about transportation yeah. first, because this is, this is going to be uh, unfortunately short. We all are, are fully aware of the transportation challenges the city of Memphis uh, and, and, and many urban communities yeah, have. Yeah, most. <laughs> right? So, so we do not really tackle transportation. Gotcha. The, our whole model is built on us going. I mean, people, you know, we're a virtual organization. People ask me, well, where do you work? I'm like, I work in over 100 communities all over Memphis. That's, we go to people primarily. Yeah. The events at Theater Memphis and our studio courses that are in libraries and museums are intended for independent seniors. So people who still drive and do and get to where they need to go on their own. Yeah. Um, that said, we do have a limited budget to rent, you know, from Tennessee Limousine and, and places like that. Um, kind of shuttle bus situation. Y yes, to get people to events. But that is a uh, on occasion situation yeah. as opposed to a regular situation. Now, would we like to get 
You know, yes, we would. But the city has some, you know, for people who go to senior centers and, and community centers, there are some MATA buses available to transport those folks. And a lot of the senior communities have buses to bring those folks. So it isn't a hopeless situation. But the hardest people for us to reach are what I call the unaffiliated senior, the person who is in her home or his home and doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't go to you know church, library, uh, community center, anything. Theater. That's the MIFA challenge, right? The, the Meals on Wheels. Well, going and so into MIFA the, meets that by yeah. by the Meals on Wheels. And and way back when we would have musicians go around with. Uh, Meals on Wheels delivery people oh, really? and do uh, yeah. some things. And, and, you know, maybe we can do that again in the future. But, you know, we are a staff of four, you yeah. know, doing almost 2,000 events a year. So we can't. It's crazy, by the way. We, we That's can't. crazy talk. It, it, it's, That's so it's, many events. It's a lot, but it's because of all these partnerships. And it's just, it's, it, it, it is it is a lot of events, but we're able to do this because of the partnerships that we have with so many people that kind of help make this happen, yeah. you know. Um we're going to keep working on transportation. We're looking for some transportation magic. And if I find it, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, because yeah. if I find it, you're going to want me back on the sidebar talking about yeah. it. Because it's oh, going to absolutely. be so, so amazing. Yeah. Right? No, no, it's a huge challenge. Um, we talk about with lots of arts organizations oh gosh, and the arts organizations that are trying to get out like the shell on wheels. Like we need to, you know, the shell is an amazing place in the middle of, of Memphis. Eric, the other question that, that you asked me, which is really interesting, is how we how we reach the the individual who really isn't excited to be reached. Yes, you know, how much yeah. how much energy and time can we put into really trying to do some deep engagement? So so we kind of we work with basically two types of communities where seniors live or gather. And, you know, some are, have more resources and they actually have staff members whose jobs are to get people to events sure. and to encourage participation and things like that. In the less um, resource communities that we work with, there is no one who is assigned to any sort of duty like that. Um, so it, I'm excited to say that we just recently hired a director of community outreach um, who came from MIFA and had already worked with a lot of the communities she's going to be working for, yeah. you know, with us. But her job is exactly that, to go in and to really um, get more deeply rooted in the culture of the community, find that person who is um, like the key senior contact. We, we, we say that there, there's always the mayor. You know, there is that person in the community who like knows everybody, who knows what's going on, has a finger on the pulse, and can kind of be our boots on the ground and sort of kind of like a train the trainer program, you know, help help us build engagement. And so that's yeah. what we're we're working on now because unfortunately, like the one on one approach is just yeah, um, it's incredible. It's not viable with the numbers that that we're dealing with. Yeah. How about too? I mean, if there are people listening who have parents or aunts and uncles or whatever who are kind of in this category do they reach out to you directly do they reach out to the, where their fam, where their family member is and hope that they get in touch with creative aging i mean again right. you, you know they, they can do either one I, we we get calls from um, older adults uh, children you know adult children all the time saying my this is what's happening what do i do how do we yeah. engage you know and we love to hear from people like that um, we help them connect to our organization if their loved one is, you know, I'll often say, well, if you don't mind, tell me where your parent lives, because then I can identify that they may be near a library branch where we do work at a, a, a senior center where we do work or, or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's all arts. It is all music and arts engagement. So it's it's arts broadly, but no, we don't do fitness and we don't do, you know, a, a yeah. lot of things that are super important and great for people to stay sure. vibrant and healthy. But we really... We're in the arts lane. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, yeah. I, I get that. We were talking earlier, you, you mentioned some of the, the statistics. It, I, I think I pulled this off your website. So, I mean, something like 10,000 Americans turn 65 each day. Yeah. What did we say? 135,000 adults who are over 65 in Shelby County. Well, uh, yeah. Or it's more. About more now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and coming up on a third of people in Shelby County, senior, excuse me, third of seniors live alone in yeah. Shelby County, yeah. which is, you know, tough. Tough. Um, and again, projecting 160,000 plus seniors um, in Shelby County by 2030. Yeah. And so the need is... The, is the need is huge. And, and, and what's interesting is that I've learned, you know, as, as you know, I come from like a law background. And so I, I've learned a lot in um, my time at this organization. But one thing is that ageism is super real and that people are really 
ageist, but the as we have more people getting into the 65 plus category, there's, there's, I've really seen a shift in the realization that, well, wait a minute, you know, I thought 65 was old, you know, just like kids do. You're so <laughs> I old. To, I used to you, think you're so old. old, right? I used but to then, think mid fifties was old. <laughs> that's right. And then you got there, right? And, and so as, as, as the culture is beginning to understand that what 70 or 80 looks like really depends on how you age. Yeah. And, and there's some things we can't control, but many things we can and staying active and connected and vibrant is is huge. And the arts are a real, they're a real health builder. I mean, they really can people help people stay healthy longer by being, using your mind, using your creativity, oh, activating yeah. those, you know, those uh, brain waves, you know, and, and thinking, and yeah. continuing to think. And staying engaged. Right. I mean, that's a huge thing. In community. And isolation is, is sort of the opposite. It's, it's the devil in the room uh, for anyone. It doesn't matter what your socioeconomic uh, status, your education status, your life experience, isolation is bad yeah. for people's health. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, speaking, I, I'm curious, how, you've been three years, four years now, eight, eight. Why did I say, <laughs> why did I think it was less than that? Anyway. Ah, okay. I so know. eight it's, time um, flies almost eight COVID. I, I ask this of a lot of organizations and I think of your, your, yours particularly, how was COVID? COVID. How have things changed and, and not returned to normal since COVID in terms of the work y'all do? What did you learn in COVID that you sort of stuck with? You know, I yeah. mean. Well, I think what COVID did, uh, you know, we, we always look for the silver linings in bad situations. And, and a silver lining in COVID for us was that the world woke up to the negative impacts of isolation. Yeah. And uh, for people of all ages, is, is it, there's this huge awareness um, that there did not exist before. We did not stop during COVID. It was, um, I mean, talk about age being ageist. You know, when it came, when it first came to my attention that we could convert our classes to Zoom, I was like, well, I don't know. Right, right. I mean, I'm being honest. And then we did one and then we did another one. And then we ended up doing about 400. You know, I mean, it, it was crazy. Yeah. And people were signing up. And I cannot tell you how many participants said, this saved my life. Yeah. This saved my life, staying engaged and having something to do and having my friends on the Zoom uh, class, yeah. you know, and it, it was great. And the way our artists adapted and their willingness to like, yeah. okay, we'll figure out how to teach a painting class on Zoom. We had um, volunteers from Hutchison School who delivered art supplies door to door oh, wow, to yeah. all these people who were participants in classes. I mean, it was just amazing the way, you know, our community came together in so many ways during COVID and, um, that that is one example of it. So so anyway, we grew during COVID. Um, we are we were lucky as an arts organization. A lot of arts organizations were heavily burdened by facilities um, and you know buildings, and we don't have that. Yeah. So all of us working out of our homes, we you know we still worked out of our homes. I mean, there was no theater that didn't fill up. Yeah. yeah. So do, do you still do Zoom stuff, or did uh, you drop that? We, we occasionally do, but, yeah. but we find there is a lot of Zoom arts engagement opportunity available widely on the Internet that people oh, okay. can yeah. do. And so, you know, other people are kind of in that lane and Why would he, just I with mean, scarcity of time and resources yeah. Yeah. and being together is so great. And our local artists, of course, like being in person. Yeah. It's just it's it's preferred. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we would do it. I mean. It's not a closed door. It's not a closed Yeah. No, 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 I was just curious. But I hadn't thought about the other organizations and, yeah, why replicate? You know, it's like people ask us, why don't you do more national news? I'm like, if you can't find a place to get national news, I think I think there's plenty of places to get national news. We don't have to jump into that as Daily Memkin. Um, with just a minute left here, what did I miss? People can learn more at Creative Aging. Just search for it online. Yes, creativeagingmidsouth.org. Please check it out. Yeah. And they can donate. They can get involved. They can yeah, I mean, that. we're a nonprofit organization and so grateful to all of our sponsors and, you know, Artsmen and the Tennessee Arts Commission, First Horizon, all these Tresvent, wonderful organizations that are huge supporters of creative aging um, and, and of our community in general. Yeah. But, you know, we really do rely on individuals to help support us. So our fundraisers yeah. in September, be <laughs> okay. on the lookout. <laughs> um, last question I always try to ask people, because um, YXR is basically a music station primarily. What was the first, and this will be funny because we've known each other so long. What was the first concert you ever went to? Okay. 
Um, there are no bad answers, by the way, and there okay. are no embarrassing answers. Okay, I was, I think I was like seven years old, and I might have been wearing a smock dress. It was the Donnie and Marie show. Wow, that is so good. <laughs> because, that is so good. Do you remember it was on TV? Oh, and yeah. I think when my parents went out on the weekend, we would watch oh, the yeah. Donnie and Marie Osmond show because we were little girls, and it was like this flashy thing, and they came to the Mid-South Coliseum, and our parents took us. I'm sure that they were like, oh, my Goodness, we what are we doing? But anyway, that's really good. We that's must a have first. begged, and we did. I know. What was the first you went to with your own money? Give, um, or, give or take, you know what I mean. Like, it was. It was also at the Mid South Coliseum, and it was Cheap Trick. That's a good one. I think we've had a Cheap <laughs> Trick. I think we've had a cheap, maybe even at the Mid South Coliseum. And it was a triple pretty, header, and I can't remember oh, who else was th- there. Could be like REO Speedwagon or something. Maybe. And I don't, <laughs> see, I need to look it up yeah, because. Yeah. Anyway, that's good. It was um, a while ago. Mia Henley from Creative Vision, thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate it. That is all the time we have uh, this week. If you missed any of the show, you can go to WYXR, you can go to the Daily Memphis, and wherever you get your podcast and get the full show. Um, the sidebar airs on WYXR 91.7 every Thursday at 1130. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.